Hi, this is Stephen e. Andrews, Outlaw Bookseller, author of 100 Must Read Science Fiction Novels, 100 Must Read Fantasy Novels, various other things like that. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Thanks for watching. And um, even if you're new or not and you haven't subscribed, I know it's a YouTube bore. Everybody says that everybody has to do it to keep their channel going. Please subscribe if you can. I thought I'd start to do a bit more horror content on the channel because I do love horror. I've done lots of science fiction of late, which will continue. Um, but I wanted to do more horror because I've been thinking more about it recently. And um, today's video is about my long held belief that horror is not a genre, but a bricolage. So in the title cards, I've sort of shown you what um, the word bricolage means in a broad sense. But I want to focus really on um, breaking down the idea that horror is a genre. So to help me do that, I thought I'd pick up this book. This is um, Tashin's Horror Cinema, which just lives underneath my TV <laughs> with a pile of other things. And, and I've, I've read a lot about, about horror over the years. I've watched loads of horror films. I've been a horror fan for like, since I was about 10 years old. And like all their books, it's really nice. It's about 15, 16 pounds, high production values, and lots of great pictures. And I bought it really because, um, I really wanted something which had really nice stills from horror, classic horror films, and um, it's a lovely book. I want to use it to illustrate my thesis. Now, horror, as I say, I don't think is a genre. So how am I going to sort of justify that? Well, just taking one example, um, looking through this at some of the classic horror films inside, and what I'm saying refers to literature as well, of course. So so just this, Psycho, okay? Um, my belief, is that horror, if you look at any work of horror, it can be broken down into other genres. Some horror is science fiction, some is fantasy, and some is crime. So for example, if you look at Psycho, it's crime horror. Nothing in it is supernatural, nothing in it is science fictional. All of it could have happened. And of course, it's based on the, the novel Psycho by Robert Bloch, which when you read it, reads very much like a horror novel. It doesn't read like a crime novel, not like a police procedural or an existential crime novel, anything of that kind. It very much reads like a horror novel. Now, of course, it's got the Freudian thing about Norman and his mother, and it's based loosely, of course, upon the Ed Gein case, Wisconsin in the 50s. Now, Ed Gein, um, serial killer. If you haven't heard of him, you can look him up. I'm not going to talk about him too much. He is, has become strangely a kind of cult hero, um, which is a weird thing for a serial killer to become. But his exploits, um, as deranged as they were, inspired any number of um, books and films from Psycho, um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Deranged, um, and many others. So um, that's, that's sort of an example of real life horror. It's crime horror. Crime horror, I think, is, is the horror which is based upon things which have happened or can happen. If you take, for example, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, there's nothing supernatural about it. There is a brief mention early on where one of the characters talks about astrology and how Saturn's in retrograde or something like that, but there's nothing supernatural about it. There's nothing of supernatural tradition and there's nothing science fictional in it. It could happen and again it's based on the Ed Gein thing. Interestingly, the kind of iconography in Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the sort of thing that pops up later in the Blair Witch Project and you know the sort of hanging um, items in the trees and what have you are similar to those indoors in Leatherface's house but there's nothing really of um, of the supernatural in it and if you look through this book and pick out some of the classic things let's take Alien for example Alien um, science fiction pure science fiction um, is set in the future 
on a mining ship. The cast bring on board an egg from an alien planet, which then erupts open and reveals a creature which has a life cycle some like, somewhat like a predatory wasp. And um, if there's murder, mayhem, suspense, gore, what have you throughout. And of course, it's based upon A. E. Van Vogt's story cycle, um, The Voyage of the Space Beagle from 1939. And Fox had to settle out of court with Van Vogt on that. Then, of course, you get things like Dracula, which is supernatural horror. Dracula literally means the son of the devil. And Dracula, of course, is an undead vampire. He grows younger as he drinks more blood. He can change into various animals. And there's no scientific explanation for this. And even though when Van Helsing is brought in, Van Helsing is a scientist, he goes to old folk methods, to superstition, to magic, to find ways of dispatching the Count. So, but it's, it's the supernatural, it's fantasy. One thing that really marks fantasy as a genre is it's, it's ability to not have to explain anything. Science fiction always has an explanation which is based upon technology or the development of future technology. Whereas when you write fantasy, you just have to invoke magic or nothing at all. So that's a distinct genre difference. Science fiction is usually very distinct as a genre because there's always something in it called a novum, a new thing, a paradigm shifting element um, that pushes the story into something beyond realism or beyond the currently possible. So it's space travel, it's time travel, it's what have you, it's variations on those things. And there are lots of different tropes in science fiction which are used, but they're all novums, they're all new things. Now, if you look at fantasy, fantasy arguably has a novum, but the novum of fantasy is something that doesn't have to be explained or is explained by magic. It's the irrational rather than the rational. And if you get what appears to be a science fiction story full of spaceships, robots, what have you, and then there's a sudden appearance of a supernatural element, and a good example of this is Star Wars, that the Force, which I, I think maybe is in one of the later ones is explained as being some to do with mitochondrial DNA. I don't know, because I'm not a Star Wars fan. But if you look at the first film, the Force is clearly a mystical thing. It's not a scientific thing, and it's not explained scientifically. So once you get that element of the supernatural, of the unscientific, the work immediately becomes fantasy. And you, know, you get people say, oh, well, you know, fantasy, you know, the magic is just a science. We haven't discovered how it works yet. But until that is the case, it is supernatural. It's unscientific. So once you allow the supernatural into a story and give it credence and reality, it ceases to be science fiction or realism and it becomes fantasy. Um, realism, of course, is a huge genre with many subgenres, and crime, for example, is a classic example of a realist subgenre. You get the Western, naval fiction, historical fiction, what have you. You know, there's any number of possible things. And so, if you look at horror, if you look at individual works, you'll see that some are science fiction, like Alien, some are supernatural fantasy, like Dracula. Um, and some are realism, they're crime, fi they're crime fiction, like Psycho. So just looking through this book, we look at a few examples and you'll see what I mean. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and the Frederick March version, which is fantastic. Science fiction, pharmacy and pharmacology are used in this for Jekyll to reveal his other side, which of course is part of him already and it's there because he's an integrated whole man. It's just that the drugs throw Hyde, the bad half, into sharp relief. So that's science fiction. And if you look at Frankenstein, um, in here they select Bride of Frankenstein. Now Frankenstein is often categorised as horror and when I'm at work as a bookseller and I find that somebody has shelved Frankenstein with horror, I always move it to science fiction because the general consensus is that it's one of the primary works of early SF. And of course the creatures, because you've got Bride of Frankenstein here, um, are created through scientific means which are hinted at and rather not made explicit in the book.
uh, but in the films they're always sort of really definite, definitively brought down as chemical and electrical. So science fiction, if you look at The Thing, John W. Campbell, 1937, filmed in, you know, 50 and again 81 by John Carpenter um, from a science fiction magazine, pure science fiction narrative. So you see what I mean? You see how you can break down pretty much every horror film you can think of into fitting into one of those, into either science fiction or fantasy, or into realism, into crime fiction. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, science fiction. Psycho, as we say, crime horror. Repulsion, crime horror. It's got Peeping Tom in here as well, which I think I bypassed. And it's interesting that crime horror with elements of sexuality starts to become more of a thing as society gets more permissive, both in writing, but especially more in cinema. It starts to happen in the 50s. And then it becomes a major part of horror in the cinema um, as time goes on. If you think of things like Silence of the Lambs, um, you know, you think of the sort of 70s. Night of the Living Dead, it's an interesting one. Um, they were called ghouls then, not zombies. They're ghouls in the film. It's the 60s. Um, it's science fiction. The explanation that's given for the, ret the return to life of the dead in the film is of, is of radiation from a returning space probe that's malfunctioned. Real science fiction conceit. Rosemary's Baby, The Devil, Possession, Fantasy, The Exorcist, God and the Devil, Possession again, The Supernatural, Pazuzu, an ancient Assyrian wind demon, fantasy, supernatural fantasy of the highest order. The Wicker Man. The Wicker Man's an interesting one because of course we'd call it folk horror. Um, the Wicker Man of course doesn't have any actual supernatural events in it because it's based on supernatural belief and that's really what makes it folk horror which is an interesting term that we return to again in future videos I'm going to do on horror. Um, but of course it's a kind of crime horror because um, Howie, you know, is, is sacrificed and it's murder, um, but there's nothing actually supernatural happens in it. It's just supernatural belief. So that's an interesting one. So it shows how crime horror possibly typifies horror at its best in its cross-genre status as a bricolage, as different elements coming together. Because what it's about, it's about the approach. Horror is about the conjuring of a feeling of dread or fear, of the frailty of the body, of the fear of death, of the shock of gore, all those things. It's an approach, not a genre. It's not typified by a definable novum of a particular kind that separates it from other genres. It contains all other genres. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, crime horror. Carrie, a very interesting one, science fiction. Carrie has psi powers. A common thing in science fiction writers from the 1940s as scientifically explicable, common in the works of people like Philip K. Dick. Um, I used to have this poster on my um, my wall, my bedroom wall, as a kid I had a proper quad of it. And um, it's interesting because they said, you know, this is the American poster. It says, if you've got a taste for terror, take Carrie to the prom. On the British poster, it was party, not prom. A real favourite of mine, Suspiria. Pure supernatural horror, fantasy, witches, superb. The classic Halloween, crime horror. As we've mentioned, alien, pure science fiction, science fiction horror. Another favorite, The Shining. Interesting one, The Shining, because of course it's supernatural. There's ghosts and what have you. Danny, is Danny's power supernatural? Is it science fiction? It doesn't matter because even if his power is science fictional, even if it is genetic, it's a psi power, there's no doubt we're talking about ghosts, the past seeping through. Um, supernatural horror. The Company of Wolves, pure fantasy, werewolves, the supernatural. The Blair Witch Project, the supernatural, fantasy. So you see what I mean? The genres distinguish themselves by the nature of their novum, if they have one, science fiction or fantasy. Horror incorporates, it's a field, it's a bricolage, it brings the genres together, it brings together science fiction, fantasy and crime. Not always mixed, usually separate. So horror is not a genre. Have a think about this, have a think about your favourite horror novels, your favourite horror stories or films. 
and see you know which of the genres they fall into are there cases that exceptions that prove the rule it's an interesting one to think about i'll be very interested to see what you think so please subscribe add some comments and um, i'll be back again soon and i'm going to talk um next time i talk about horror about the role of um sword and sorcery related to horror and with reference to two particular writers robert holstock and brian bates maybe a few more and that'll be coming up probably in a week or so thanks for watching um, enjoy your winter saturday day off which is what i'm doing now and i think maybe this afternoon i'll settle down and um, read some more classic horror Bye for now.